Live from WFSB, Connecticut's number one local news, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 7. Good morning. It is 7 o'clock on this Thursday morning, and we have the latest on breaking overnight. Protesters across the country took to the streets to express their anger and frustration over the decision not to charge three Kentucky police officers in Breonna Taylor's death. From New York City to Atlanta, Dallas to Chicago, Taylor's death is one of several that have sparked national demonstrations against police brutality and systemic racism. In Taylor's hometown of Louisville, two police officers were shot amid the protests just hours after a grand jury made its decision. Both of those officers are expected to survive, but now there is concern about more violence. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Roger Susanna explains. The gunfire rang out around 8.30 last night. At that point, crowds had been gathered in Louisville for hours, protesting after a grand jury made its decision that no officers would be directly charged in the shooting death of Breonna Taylor. Back in March, the 26-year-old was shot six times in the hallway of her apartment during a botched drug investigation. Taylor's boyfriend fired at the officers first, thinking they were intruders. Yesterday, the grand jury said two of the now-fired officers who shot at Taylor were justified in using force to protect themselves. The only charges brought were against former officer Brett Hankison for firing into neighboring homes. Professor Lorenzen Boyd is a criminal justice and diversity expert with the University of New Haven. He says the next step could be intervention from the federal government if they decide there was a civil rights violation. I don't know that they would because it already went to a grand jury, so I don't anticipate that they're going to do anything. So I think, unfortunately, this could be the end of the line. As for the two officers who were shot in Louisville, the city's police chief says they do have a suspect in custody, but he's worried about more violence. I am very concerned about the safety of our officers. Obviously, we've had two officers shot tonight, and that is very serious. I think that the safety of our officers and the community we serve is of utmost importance. Roger Suzanin. Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Hi, everybody. Good morning. We are taking a look at a dry early morning dual pole radar scanning the state dry. What else is new, right? And it's going to be another dry day today. But you're going to notice a little bit more in the way of cloud coverage than we've had over the past couple of days. We are expecting partly even mostly cloudy skies by this afternoon with the temperature approaching the 80 degree mark in inland Connecticut. Just a little bit cooler for the shoreline, but again, the clouds will prevail. You'll notice them 12, 1, 2, 3. So partly even maybe even mostly cloudy skies during the afternoon. It's all the fringe clouds coming up from the, the remnants of beta. I'll show you that in just a couple of seconds. In the meantime, enjoy the temperatures. Uh, 49, the typical overnight low. That's the average. We're at 46 in Willimantic and in Norwich, 47 in Danbury and in Meriden. So you'll need a light jacket as you're heading out the door, but we've got 51 for you at Brainerd, 53 for you at Bradley, 53 in Torrington. So those are some pretty good looking numbers, right? And they're up from yesterday with the exception of New Haven and Groton. Everybody's up from yesterday and yesterday we were up substantially from the day before. So we keep adding to these uh, overnight lows. All right, the dew points are in the upper 40s, low 50s, fairly comfortable. And look at that spider. Web designer. <laughs> He's Pete, the web designer. Uh, Hartford, absolutely. I could watch this all day. This is like a horror movie. Uh, stores, good morning to you. Uh, we're taking a look at uh, some beautiful sunrise shots there, and we'll take you to New Haven right now. All right, so let's show you the satellite and radar. I'm going to widen out the shot, and you're going to see the cloud coverage. Uh, making its way all the way in the, uh, the outer bands of uh, what was once Tropical Storm Beta, now just a big old rainstorm, just pounding rains in Mississippi uh, and out portions of northern Alabama. You've got um, Kentucky and uh, Tennessee and even portions of uh, North Dakota excuse me, North Carolina, North Dakota. Well, North Dakota is not getting any rain this morning, but North Carolina getting a little bit of that rain as well. Now we could really use some of this rain, but we're not gonna get it. It's gonna stay to the south of us, but we are gonna be dealing with some of the clouds. And that is according to early morning futurecast. Tomorrow's weather today, you'll notice partly to mostly cloudy skies later on this afternoon. Uh, an okay day all in all, no rain is expected. And then tomorrow we get back to the partly to mostly sunny skies during the day tomorrow. So let's call it uh, 75 to 80 during the day today, partly to mostly uh, cloudy. It'll be warm. Sun is up at 641, sets at 644, and then your seven-day forecast includes warmth. 
Summer like warmth, 80, 81 tomorrow, 81 on Saturday, 83 on Sunday, 83 degrees on Sunday. That's 11 degrees above the average there. And then Monday, a chance for some scattered showers. Tuesday, scattered showers, not a drought buster by any means. And then Wednesday, it does get cooler with partly to mostly sunny skies and a high of 73 degrees inland, 75 degrees for the shoreline. That's a check of your early warning forecast. I'm meteorologist Scott Haney in the early warning forecast center at Channel 3. Hoping you all have a great day. Nicole, back to you. All right, thanks, Scott. Turn now to the latest on the coronavirus here in Connecticut. Now, the latest numbers show the positivity rate in our state has actually gone up. More than 10,000 new tests have been performed. 155 came back positive, so that leaves us with a positivity rate of 1.5%. One more person we learned has died from the virus. 73 people are now in the hospital. That's up three from yesterday. The increase in cases, of course, as you know, is impacting schools across the state. Enfield High School announced that students will be remote learning today and tomorrow after a positive test in the community. School leaders did not say if it was a student or a teacher who came down with the virus. About 100 people in Fairfield are in quarantine now for the next two weeks after officials say six high school students tested positive for COVID-19. The cases were at Fairfield Ludlow High School and Fairfield Prep. Officials say a number of those cases are linked to gatherings that were held over the weekend. Contact tracing is now underway and officials there are calling on parents just to make sure their kids are following the rules. Our school district has gone above and beyond to try to bring back normalcy and have school for our, chi for our children. And, and, and these, uh, these types of things could really spiral out of control. A bus driver for Waterbury schools also tested positive for the virus. The school says the bus was taken out of service and disinfected. Anyone who came in contact with the driver has also been contacted. Now, some Connecticut school districts are looking for ways to get student athletes back on the field after the state canceled the fall football season. The Southern Connecticut Conference says a number of schools are interested in a seven on seven league. Other towns are looking into forming independent club teams. The Connecticut Interscholastic Athletic Conference tells us that they will need to review any plans for leagues or individual schools. Today, Reservoir Nursing Facility in West Hartford is hosting a special memorial service for those who have lost their lives to the coronavirus. Seasons Hospice will be donating a white rose bush to honor those victims. And West Hartford's mayor is also expected to speak to honor the victims. The event begins at 2 this afternoon. And today, the body of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg will lie in repose for one more day right outside the U.S. Supreme Court. Thousands passed by yesterday to say their goodbyes, including former President Bill Clinton, who nominated her back in 1993. And now the nomination fight to replace her continues in Washington, with President Trump moving quickly to fill the seat before the November election. Channel 3's Laura Podesta has the latest from the Supreme Court with the story. Ruth is gone and we grieve. From the Great Hall of the Supreme Court, the life of Ruth Bader Ginsburg was celebrated as a vision of the American dream. And it is the rare prophet who not only imagines a new world, but also makes that new world a reality in her lifetime. She was not an opera star, but she found her stage right behind me in our courtroom. There she won famous victories that helped move our nation closer to equal justice under law. More than 100 former law clerks during her 27 years as a justice stood outside as her casket was brought to the ceremony with friends and family. Mourners of all ages lined up to say farewell. I feel it's important to come here and thank this incredible woman for the long fight. President Trump and the First Lady are expected to come pay their respects today. Tomorrow, Justice Ginsburg will be moved to the U.S. Capitol to become the first woman to lie in state there. The scam will be before the United States Supreme Court. At the White House, President Trump defended moving quickly to fill Ginsburg's seat, arguing a close election could be decided by the court. And I think having a 4-4 situation is not a good situation. Later, the president wouldn't commit to a peaceful transfer of power if he loses. Well, we're going to have to see what happens. Former Vice President Joe Biden looked exasperated when told. I don't know what to say about it, but it does surprise me. President Trump is expected to name his nominee on Saturday. Laura Podesta, CBS News, Washington. Thank you so much for tuning in to Eyewitness News. Remember, you can get news and weather updates anytime on the Channel 3 app. Have a great day and remember to stay healthy and stay positive.